Hi, I've got Debbie Trenholm from Savvy Company here with me today, and we're going to go through a wine tasting. Debbie, welcome. <laughs> welcome. Uh, cheers. Good cheers. to be here. Yay. Look at that, branded cups and every glasses and everything. Okay, let's go through this wine tasting. So tell us what, what, walk us through a wine tasting that you would go through with your, with your customers um, to tell us what we're looking for in wines. Sure. Well, when I'm asked about wine tasting, I say it's as easy as eyes, nose, and mouth. And you do it in that order, no matter how tipsy you might get, still will remember the order of wine. So I often will talk about the color of the wine and you and I are drinking different types of wine. So um, asking you about the, what color does it remind you of? Not necessarily what color do you think it is, but what does it remind you of? So if you have a piece of white paper, there's even an envelope on my desk. You look at the, the wine up against the white paper. And if you were in a, a restaurant, you would be looking up at the wine against a, um, a tablecloth, right? So what color does that remind you of? And it doesn't show very well for me, but certainly- Mine shows good. I'll be my Vanna White. <laughs> I'll be your Vanna White. Yes. So obviously it's a pink, and what color of a pink is it light? Is it dark pink? There's no right or wrong answer. It's what does your eye uh, capture? But the most important thing is, does it look inviting? Does it look good? Or does it look a little murky? Or does it look a little- Cloudy. Or cloudy or something, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, to be cloudy, and that's called natural wines, and mm -hmm. unfiltered. But this one, and what you have, is is quite, um, quite appealing, and you're curious as to what it tastes like and what does it smell like. So then you go from the eyes to the nose. And you okay. grab the glass. Um, these are tasting glasses. You take it by the stem, rather than put fingerprints all over the the bowl. Have, of the you, have you seen them holding on to the base? I mean, that's how I was taught whatever you're comfortable with. If you want to, you could do it on top of a surface, uh, like a top of a table or something. Or you, yeah, like you that. Me on my desk. On my desk. Here's a tricky for, uh, for those of us who do this all the time. Can you swirl both ways, clockwise and counterclockwise? Can you? Try it. No, no. With my right hand? With, I can do it this way? Woo! Woo. <laughs> <laughs> it all over the place. Nope. I'm a, I, I only swirl one way. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so when the idea of, of swirling is to release um, the aromas out of the glass, not outside of the glass, but- Yeah, um, that would be bad. I failed. <laughs> don't worry. Okay. And um, it's kind of like when you spritz uh, perfume or cologne into a room, it's really intense when it's right where um, the perfume bottle is, but then it fills the, the room. So that's what you're trying to create with, by um, swirling the glass. You're introducing air to the wine. Right. It, it, except with uh, sparkling wines, you don't want to introduce air to those. So don't, don't swirl your sparkling because you'll look like a noob. <laughs> but not so much with wines. I mean, I always tend to swirl the wines kind of thing. But with whiskeys, when I'm doing a whiskey tasting, um, I recommend that people sniff first and then come back, then swirl and then smell. And when you're doing the first sniff or even after the, the, the swirling sniff, I mean, obviously with whiskeys, you don't want to stick your nostril right in the glass because it will burn everything. Every, every little sealy eye in your nose, it will burn off kind of thing, or at least it will feel like it's doing that. Um, but do you recommend doing a, an initial sniff before you do the swirling in your, in your wine tasting? Sure. Okay. I, I'm not going to get too particular on that one just because one of the things that I um, like to do is is take try the wine twice before you give it an impression. So that's and your, that, yeah, that makes sense. That's my idea. Yeah. My idea. So just enjoying the aromas again, does it smell good or not so good? And are you still inclined to try a sip of it? If it reminds you of something, then great. Yeah. Um, but it's all coming down to that big moment of, of um, taking a sip of wine. What exactly does it smell like? Yes, let's get into that. But if you just say it smells like wine, good, because that's what it is. Yeah, it smells like grapes. Good. Yeah. And then you have the big hurrah moment of actually taking a sip. <laughs> now, what's interesting 
um, I've learned is that when you take a sip of wine, you're actually doing two things. You're taking a sip and also taking um, uh, notice of the aromas. So you're also sniffing the wine at the same time. And uh, we can play a game if you want. Do we have time? Sure. Okay. So take us, um, uh, enjoy the wine from the aroma and then take a sip. What does your wine remind you of? Kool-Aid. In a good way. Yeah. <laughs> In a good way. Adult Kool-Aid, yes. Adult Kool-Aid. Okay, it now. Always remind me of adult Kool-Aid, yes. Okay. So now, that's it always good for video. Take a sip, <laughs> but you're going to hold your nose. Okay. Okay, go. I want to watch you. <laughs> Am I supposed to? Sorry, that was probably really bad. Okay, yes, I think. Take two. <laughs> and here we go. Oh, it's so hard to... My ears all plugged up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't like it as much. There you go. Yep. So, <laughs> interesting is that when we're actually taking a sip, we're also enjoying the aromas which enhance the overall flavor. So if your glass is full of aromas, just floating there, yeah. you'll enjoy the wine even more so. So all the more reason to swirl. So then after holding your nose and knowing how much enjoyment um, disappears when you hold your nose, so might as well um, enjoy it by the swirling. Now, when you take a sip, you wanna have explosion of the flavors and that's where you actually chew your wine mm -hmm. or really coat every little corner of your mouth. And it is that explosion. It's almost like fireworks in your mouth. So yeah. it's one thing just to take a sip or if you take a sip and then get some air going over top of it, that kind of thing. <clears throat> let it all just get into all the different crevices. Yeah. It may look funny, but it tastes so good. It's like, oh, that's good. I find when I do that, um, a lot of the alcohol comes out of the wine. Like I get the the hints and the explosion of flavor, but the after effect is I taste a lot more of the alcohol in the wine. And I know that um, that that there may be that may be more because I'm female um, than than not from the scientific side of things, um, yeah. from the chemistry side of things, we just have a little bit more taste buds and everything. And therefore we can recognize alcohol um, more so than when I smelled it. Like I couldn't smell the alcohol in here, but when I feel it in my mouth and, and you know, bring it all around, then there's that hint of alcohol in there that I noticed. Nice. So then when it's too alcoholic or the taste is just not pleasing, mm -hmm. that's when you dive for the cheese board. <laughs> that's when your food is so important. Yeah. Um, because what happens is the food actually coats the inside of your mouth with whatever butter or protein or fat that you might have in the food. That's when it coats the inside of the mouth so that the next step that you have, it softens the blow. Yeah. And so the alcohol or the acidity or the tannins, depending on what kind of wine it is, um, changes the overall flavor and the taste, and hopefully it makes it better. Excellent. Okay, so so now maybe we can do a little bit of a quick fire. I'll ask okay. you a question, you re you answer it. So um, right, I'm ready. <laughs> in going with with the whole you know wine tasting theme. How many uh, flavor receptors do you have on your tongue? There's five. Name them. Oh, I always forget the fifth one. Okay, so there's sweet, sour, um, bitter, salty. Umami. Umami, thank you. <laughs> okay, recommend. I have a ton of uh, friends that only drink red wine. What would you recommend for a white or a rosé that, that they would perhaps try and enjoy. 
So what um, the little known fact for those diehard red wine fans is that a lot of rosés, well, pretty much all rosés are made with the same grapes that they would have with their red wine. So they can't necessarily be expecting it to taste the same because it's, um, it uses the same types of grapes. They may have been growing in the same area of the vineyard, but I've learned over the years is that in this time of year, a winemaker, so in the springtime, the winemaker will decide whether or not they're gonna make rosé or red wine with that particular um, part of their vineyard. So it's growing for rosés or growing to be for reds. Oh, I didn't um, know that. Picked and then decided. Now, okay. I'm sure there are some winemakers who will pick and then decide mm -hmm. uh, based on whatever their growing conditions are, but those who um, are, uh, are die hard and always want to make a interesting rosé, will um, grow the grapes for rosé. Rosé wines, I love, 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 love them. I do too. <laughs> I do. And what's really neat is the artistry or the talent of a winemaker can show through in a rosé because it doesn't have to be made with a certain recipe or in a certain specific way so that your diehard red wine fans um, are not picking up a bottle of wine saying, oh, this is the red wine I like because I know it always going to taste the same time after time. Rosé is where the winemaker gets to play. It's hard to transition to white wine, but if you give white wine a try, you may actually find you like it. And there's all kinds of different grape varieties. And it's actually harder According to a lot of winemakers I've talked to, it's harder to make a good red wine than it is to make a good red. No, let me say that again. <clears throat> That's my pause. <laughs> I've talked to a bunch of winemakers and they've actually told me that it's harder to make a good white wine than it is to make a good red wine. Oh, I, I would 100% agree with that. Although um, I do have a mantra that um, every wine is drinkable, but if it's white and it's not, that ice you'll still be able to drink it ice and fruit juice make it sangria yay <laughs> um okay so a diehard white wine drinker is there a red wine that you would introduce them to or suggest that they start with to introduce them to red wines mm. i would certainly suggest that you uh, try a gamay or a pinot noir you start baby steps now pinot noir is considered the um pinnacle of winemaking. So you're going to start with the really good stuff in order to enter into the red wine world. We, we don't want to start them with the good stuff. <laughs> they can't afford it. No, they can't. <laughs> Pinots can be really, really expensive. So I agree with you 100%. Um, I've introduced the Bruili. I don't know how to... Bruili? Bruili? B-R-O-U-I-L-L-Y. Uh, Gamay, which is like a Beaujolais, except that's a, it's a, a single varietal kind of thing. Um, next question, what's the perfect temperature for serving a rosé? Uh, perfect temperature for, uh, for a rosé is um, 20 to 30 minutes in the fridge. And if you are going to put it in a ice bucket, make sure that the ice is watered down. Yeah, because otherwise you're just chilling certain parts wherever the ice cube is hitting the bottle. Yeah, uh, but if you um, have half and half ice to water, your your wine, whether it's rosé or red or sparkling, uh, will actually um, chill a lot faster, believe it or not, than just ice cubes on a bottle. So, quick tip with that, um, just a, from a chemistry point of view, if you haven't got twenty to thirty minutes in the fridge time <laughs> ahead of time. Five minutes in the fridge, ice, water, and add salt to that. It helps um, oh, really that's a good the, the cold a lot quicker. So, yeah. And it will actually help bring it up along. So the, if you immerse the bottle, obviously, the more contact with the bottle, the colder it gets with that. On the chilling factor kind of thing, I do like to try a wine uh, straight out of the bottle and then let it rest a little bit and let it warm up. The same with red. Um, let a, a red wine warm up and see how it changes. Mm -hmm. uh, I often will, my other half will kind of tisk me as it, you didn't give the red wine enough time to warm up when you pulled it out of the, uh, the cellar down in the, in oh, the, my husband the basement. 
And I said, oh, we need wine, we're at dinner. We'll then go down to the basement, grab something, open it up and pour it. It's like, you need to let it warm up a little bit. And it does change flavors. Uh, white wine, what's, what's your temperature of choice for the white wines? It depends on the varietal, but also I don't get too, too technical about it. I try to, um, as I am clearing the breakfast dishes, I try to remember to put a bottle of, of white wine in the fridge if we're going to need it for dinner that night. But that means that it's in the fridge all day. That's far too long. If you ever see condensation on the bottle or after you poured it into the glass and there's condensation on the glass, that again, it's too cold. So just let it warm up a little did bit. Did it get cold or did you just pull the glasses out of the dishwasher? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Could be that too. Okay, so what I'm hearing is probably a good 30 minutes to an hour for, for white wines, 20 to 30 minutes for a rosé, maybe, maybe a little bit more. Um, red wines, room temperature, right? For, for temperature, the yes. general rule of thumb is room temperature. Um, there are certain white wines that don't require chilling. Yeah, so Tokai, White Port, uh, they don't need chilling necessarily. But um, what you're doing with chilling is actually um, masking the acidity. Okay. So that's a bit of the chemistry behind it. And so wines that are highly acidic or, or are acidic just generally, that's what you want to um, disappear for your enjoyment. And it will become more and more prevalent as the wine warms up. So that's a, that's a really good point because you have a lot of red wines that require a little bit cooler temperatures because they've got high acidity, right? High acidity or red wines, it's, it's predominantly tannins. And that is also uh, will come through more and more as uh, as the wine warms up. Quick fire tips and tricks. It's five o'clock somewhere. I'll drink to that. <laughs> if I rub cheese on my teeth, it prevents wine, red wine stains. Okay, on the red wine stain thing, don't wear white when you're doing a wine tasting. Don't wear perfume when you're doing a wine tasting. You need uh, to get with your oral, oral, oral olfactory senses. You don't necessarily need to leave a bottle of wine on its side when it has a screw cap. Oh, that's a good one. Don't use a corkscrew on a screw cap. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really good one, too. <laughs> My uh, another tip is to try several glasses of wine with a meal. Oh, that's really good. Your, your food will be enhanced by the wine that you drink if you choose the right wine. When you have a glass of wine that you don't like, dive for the cheese board. It might just help. It won't stop. You're going to be putting out a newsletter soon, are you not? We send out our e-blast periodically, and uh, we're always promoting something in those e-blasts that might be of interest. So our savvy care packages, our wine of the month club, our cheese, our cider of the month club. And when we have events, that is where to find the invitations to those events. Um, all the information can be found at savvycompany.ca. It's great. Do you have any questions about your IP or any more quick tips that you want to provide? Or I've learned a lot and learned a lot from you over the years and also today. So thank you very much for that. You keep up the good work. I learned a lot today. So cheers. Thank you so much. Cheers. Until we uh, can get together in person and enjoy this. That'd be great. Awesome. Take All care right. of yourself.